Martin Sidsworth. I'm the Senior Employment Manager for Thomas Pocklin and Trust. Um, and today we're going to be going through um, the workshops going to be around um, design and services and ensuring that you have user involvement. Um, at the moment, everybody's on mute and all the videos are off. Um, so, you know, for the time being, you're going to have to listen to me. We've got quite a big group today. Um, but what I will do is I will stop at certain sections, probably after each each stage of the methodology to see if anybody's got any questions. Um, I also sent through some uh, learning materials earlier this morning. Um, don't worry if you haven't read them and don't worry if you haven't got access to them at the moment. Um, I'll kind of explain a little bit about them, but that's more just to give you context to to go away um, and you know and read um, read some more after the session's finished. So, as I say, today's session is all around how we um, how the, the methodology that the employment team has used to design our services um, and how we've ensured that users have been involved in that. Uh, so we use a method which is called design thinking. Um, so that is a um, a concept which is brought up by Idio, who designed the, the concept. And they define it pretty much as a process for creative problem solving. Uh, but to go a little bit deeper into that, um, design thinking at its core is a methodology for solving human-centered um, problems. A human-centered problem is obviously one where a human is at the heart of it. Uh, usually a customer or a user. Um, so as people that work for charities, you know, we, we have humans at the center of pretty much everything, everything that we do, every service that we deliver, um, you know, there's, we're doing that, we're doing that too. Um, we're doing that for the, the people that we're helping. Um, so, you know, design thinking isn't going to help you sort out an algebra problem. Uh, so when your kids bring bring home, you know, their, their homework and they're asking you about trigonometry or quadratic equations, this isn't a methodology that's going to help you with that. Uh, but if it's looking at how your website might be more friendly to your users, because there's a human at the centre of that, then this methodology is going to be, you know, absolutely key for that. Um, so design thinking is, is, obvious, um, is, is quite often associated with developing physical or digital products, but it can also be um, applied to more experiential problems, um, things like improving the efficiency of your customer, customer service helpline. Um, it's even been used to come up with solutions for things like hunger, poverty, and how to get drinking water to a remote um, population. Again, just make, you know, anything which has got a humor, uh, <laughs> humor, a human or a user at the, um, at the center of it. Um, so before we go through the, the kind of methodology to, to this, um, I want you kind of get rid of a few preconceptions. So um, design thinking isn't something that only designers can do. Um, while lots of creative types do use design thinking in what they do, um, it's something which absolutely anybody can do. Um, it doesn't require any degree in graphic design. It's just a commitment to the, to the process and the passion to solve problems. It's also important to say that if, if this, at the end of this, if this is something that you, you do want to go away and implement into your organizations, it can't just be a box ticking exercise. It's a process which has got to be adhered to. It can't just be pinned onto the end of, of something that, you, that you're already doing. Um, it's, it's, not a, you know, it's not an additional step in an existing process. It's a process in itself. Um, you can't just throw it at a problem. Um, so yeah, it, it essentially means, you know, you, you change in the, the way that your team thinks about service design, um, and user involvement and, and maybe even your senior leadership team, um, you know, it is, is really a mind shift change. Somebody once described it to me as, um, 
is that I like that scene in the Matrix where uh, where Neo meets Morpheus for the first time and has the choice between taking the blue pill or the red pill. The blue pill where he kind of goes back and, and sleeps and, and nothing changes, or the red pill where he, he takes it and then it is, his mind is open to to everything around it. And that kind of really resonated with me. It's kind of quite a quite an extreme example, but it's it's really funny that once you start doing this, you you notice so many cases where it hasn't been done, and you find it really frustrating. And then when people come to you with ideas for for doing things, you you turn into a bit of a bar about kind of oh you should use this design thinking process and, and things like that. So uh, so yeah, <clears throat> it's also important to know that. Um, to keep an open mind through this process that the problem that you think that you might be trying to solve isn't actually a problem for your users. Um, so yeah, that, you know, it's, 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 pro it's probable that you might, might do particularly the first stage of this and realize that, 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 that isn't, um, you know, that isn't what, what you want it to be. So, um, it's also not something that you can rush. It doesn't take ages. Um, you know, I think quite easily you could do this within four to eight weeks um some some uh processes will take a lot longer some might be shorter but you know for, for each stage i think a, a minimum of four weeks is required and, and you can't rush rush through it um particularly the the first stage which is the empathize stage which i'm, I'm going to move on to at the moment in, in a second um Um, it's also important to, to remember that it doesn't assume any solution already. Um, so we, there's no point going into this process if you already have an idea for a service that you want to deliver and you have everything sorted of how you want to deliver it. That's, it's just not, it, you know, it, it can't confirm ideas. This is very much for, for realizing what your, what your users want, what's going to be most beneficial for them and then designing the service which meets that need. Um, it's very much around looking at doing things for your client group rather than doing things to your client group. Um, so it might be, you know, it, there's, there's no point if you've got a piece of technology um, in mind that you, you know, you're really keen to roll out and now you're looking for a problem to fit that technology. It's gotta be the other way around. Um, because yeah, design thinking is is is, is, pri is primarily focused on identifying the problem, um, and then and th and only then at that point do you pivot to the ideas for for um, a solution to that problem. We also don't shy away from failure. Um, it's kind of you know if if you get to the end of this process and and something has has failed when you get to testing. That's absolutely fine. Um, we're, we're fine with that. The whole reason is that we haven't spent bundles of money um, on a particular idea or a particular service. And um, you know, when it when it fails, um, it, it's it's catastrophic. It really isn't. It, you know, it might be a case of of uh, you know a month's worth of work might be might might have been wasted, but compared to potentially tens of thousands of pounds, you know, that that that's much more, much more desirable. Um, so we can't always assume that we're going to get the right solution that the first time it, it might be a couple of iterations. Um, so yeah, you know, learning that something hasn't worked this is as valuable as, as learning something that has. So. Um, so yeah, while it can be really powerful, as you're going to learn, it isn't particularly complex or difficult. Um, it's just a way of asking, asking questions differently. So why should your organization do this? Um, so putting the, putting a, you know, a human centered, um, approach to, to what you deliver, um, in really kind of simple terms is you, you were designing something for, for the people that you are, that you're working for, you know, your beneficiaries, your service users, however you want to define them, ultimately your users or the humans that you're working with. Um, you, as I said earlier, when you start to do things for people rather than doing things to people, um, you get greater engagement as well. You know, it, it, it's amazing how many how many services and, and how many products I've, I've seen fail throughout my time working in the charity sector, where there's been no 
not even the slightest bit of consultation with the people that people are expecting to use this and, and then they wonder why nobody engages with it at the end. Um, and also, you know, away from the human side of things, in terms of funding these days, it's getting more and more important that you're able to demonstrate um, that users are involved at every stage of your, of your process from, from design to delivery. So, you know, this, th this methodology has that at the heart of it right from the outset. So it makes it really easy to, to demonstrate how your, how your users, how your service users, how your clients, again, however you want to define them, um, have, been, um, have been involved. Um, uh, particularly for, I've, I know it's lottery funding recently, they, they very much want, um, you wanted there to be demonstration of users being involved and, and as part of any audit in, you know, they want to see the user involvement. So even from even from that side of things, you know, moving forward, if you're if you're hoping to um, to fund projects, um, it, there is a big trend from funders now to to say we, we want to see evidence of, of where the users have been involved in, in this. <clears throat> So this is today's got to be very much an introduction. Um, you know, I'm going to show you through the phases. Um, I'll give you some examples of, of how the employment team have, have used this, um, how other organisations have used it. Um, it, you know, with a view to you going away and, and being able to do more research on this. There's, there's loads of books, there's loads of online resources. You know, if you if this piques your interest, then very much please go away and, um, you know, do some further research. Um, okay, so um, without further ado, I'll um, just take a, a couple of seconds to let all that kind of digest. I'm just going to check the time. Perfect. Uh, so now we'll we'll move on to the methodology. So, um, like I said at the start, for anybody that maybe didn't catch it, everybody is is muted and videos off at the moment. Uh, what I'll do is I'll um, open the um, I'll open I'll I'll mute everybody um, at at the end of each um, stage that we go through now. And if anybody has any questions, please please do feel free to ask them. Uh, we are against up against time a little bit, so it might be that I don't get to to everybody's questions, but I'll I'll endeavour to to get through as many as I can. Uh, so, what is the process? So, there's there's um, five five stages really to this, um, which which you know which we kind of follow. So, the first one is empathise. Um, this can also be known as a discovery phase. Um, Different organisations all will define it as, as different different things. Um, the defined stage, um, the ideation stage, prototyping stage, and the test stage. Um, so I'm going to go through for each one of these now and, and explain a, a little bit about them. So so the first one is the is the empathise slash discovery stage. Um, so one of the fundamental cornerstones of design thinking is that the logic is that in order to tru truly solve uh, for your user, you need to put yourself in their shoes. So this is essentially a process of, of getting to know your service users, getting to know your users, um, and not just in terms of, of the problem that, that you're trying to solve, but everything about them, you know, their, their motivations, um, uh, you know the 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 um, the kind of social aspects of of their lives. Essentially, what what makes them tick. Um, so the the best way to do this really is is um, through kind of through getting a uh, qualitative data. Um, so you know getting getting lots of data on on your users um so we you know the, the best way to do this really is with a one-to-one -one interview with with somebody um it allows you to really immerse yourself in the experience that your users or that your service users are having and i can't kind of it's a you know i can't over over um Kind of state this that this is this stage is is probably the the most important stage it's it's really critical 
um, that, that this stage is, is done thoroughly and done well. Uh, because as I said earlier on, this is all about not, um, not just making something fit an idea that the team already has. This has really got to be looking at, um, you know, how, um, how your user views a problem and, and you know, what, what you need to be aware of in, in that to, 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 you know, to come up with a solution for the problem that they're facing. Um, it's really important that we don't take our own assumptions into this um, or base anything on yourself as well. Um, initially, I found this quite difficult because um, I'm somebody who is blind myself. I'm working in the employment space for blind and partially sighted people. So, you know, I have my own experiences. I have my own um, thoughts about employment and, and kind of detaching yourself from that is, is really important. And, you know, doing that as, as part of this is, is, is really uh, is vital, really. Um, so I did send through an example earlier on, which was uh, from the British Red Cross, uh, which, um, you know, showed their discovery phase. I really recommend reading that, um, but with the caveat that, you know, that is the British Red Cross invest a lot of money into this. Now, I think they do it great, um, but, you know, their, their process is quite involved and, you you know, there might be certain elements that you that you wouldn't want to, to do, uh, but there might be elements in that case study that you do want to do. Um, but in terms of the employment service, what we done was we picked, um, we, we looked at our key kind of um, groups of people um, around the employment space. So that was, that was people that were, hadn't been employed for a long time, um, people that were currently in work, um, and pe pe sorry, people that were currently in work and that, but hadn't been working for very long, um, and people that were currently in work and had been working for, for quite a while. Um, and each interview was about an hour long. <clears throat> And this really dug into to what their kind of challenges were um, in day-to-day -day life. So not just to do with employment, but you know what, what challenges they faced on a day-to-day -day basis. Then we drilled down a little bit into what people's interests were, um, how they viewed um, charity organizations, how they employed employment, how they viewed employment. Was it something that they were interested in? Was it something that they weren't interested in? If it was, you know, what, what was it about being employed which they enjoyed? Um, again, not really not trying to lead the conversation, but be really open and not always accepting the first answer as well. It's kind of doing things like asking, asking questions like what else? Oh, that's interesting. How do you do that? Like really searching, searching questions. So we carried out about 10 to 15 interviews in total. And I'd say that took about four weeks. Um, so you'd, you'd carry out the interview, record it, um, you'd have your questions, um, and then you'd write up the, write up the interview afterwards. Um, we also asked as part of this how people um, accessed information. So to do that, we asked a range of different questions about how, you know, kind of people's habits online. So if they use online shopping, uh, what social media platforms they used, um, you know, how they got their information, um, whether it be email, um, through WhatsApp groups, Facebook, Twitter, um, going direct to, to websites. It just really built us up a, a big picture of, of what people were, you know, where people were at, how they were interacting with the world around them, how they're interacting with other blind and partially sighted people, um, how they're interacting with employment. Um, so yeah, so that's um, that that's how we how we kind of went through that. Um, so I'm because we're at the end of that, that empathise stage now, um, I'm just going to open up for, for any questions. Um, if you can do that for us, please, Amadeep.
Any questions, please just feel free to, to shout out. Martin, I've got one quickly. Jeff Basham from TAVIP, Technology Association of Visually Impaired People. Hi, um, I appreciate the interviews. Um, did, did you always, um, after these, did you run groups or did you work sort of more on a one-to-one -one type model? Yeah, we, we for, for this one we did work on a on more of a one to one um, model, and the the reason for that was um, we we kind of um, we wanted to avoid any any group think going on. Um, so you know we we were really interested in in learning about individuals, um, you know, problems, challenges. Um, now, you know, there is always a slight limitation with this that you, you know, that you, mm -hmm. you use in 10 to 15 people and, and is that f fully representative, but, you know, we tried to get a, a decent, mm -hmm. decent range of ages, a decent range of, um, like kind of ethnicities, uh, different people from around the, the UK as well. So, um, yeah, you, the, we, the, the problem that we kind of envisaged with, with running a focus group on this would be that you'd have um, the, mm -hmm. the potential for group think and, and mm -hmm. that was what we were trying to avoid. So. Sure. Yeah, thank you. No worries. Um, have we got any more questions? Hi, I have a question. It's yep. Gemma, Gemma Stapleton, um, trustee at My Sight Nots. Uh, I just wanted to ask how you selected the the small group of people for for the interviews. What was the process for that? <laughs> well, it was it was a little bit of seeing who, who would be interviewed. <laughs> if I'm being honest, <laughs> yeah. Um, we like I say, we we had an idea of of the type of range ranges uh, that we wanted to get. We already had people. Um, you know, we we'd been running employment services for a while, so we had we did have contacts. <laughs> Uh, we pushed out, um, we used VI Talk uh, as well to promote the, you know, that we were doing this research. Um, we used some email groups uh, for blind and partially sighted people, just encourage people to come forward and, and get involved, really. So, um, you know, we, we probably had more, we could have done more interviews if we'd wanted, but we were, you know, we were resource like there was only two people working on this. Um, if you had a bigger team, you can do more more interviews. You know, the the key is really to to have quite a, a decent demographic of people um, and experiences, and you know, have the in depth kind of chat with them really to to understand that. Um, yeah. And by the time you know, I'll, I'll move on to this in the next stage, but you you quickly start to to see trends developing even as you're interviewing people so you know yeah um yeah it, it, it's yeah we, we were very much around yeah how who, who can we get and who's willing to do it <laughs> yeah brilliant <laughs> that's great cool. thank you all right cheers um anybody else Probably hi for, yeah. hi this is caroline from my site York. hi martin oh. could, could it's Oh, sorry. I'll just take Caroline's first. Okay, and then, we all and then we'll relax. Do you more. carry on? Yeah, cool. Okay, thank you. Um, Martin, I just wondered, um, what minimum size would you say is a representative sample? You said um, about 10 to 15 out of... Yeah, so again, I, I think it depend on, um, it, you know, it, 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 it depend on... I'd never... If, I'd say probably a minimum would be, would be 10 um really um but equally that if you you know if you didn't think that you could get 10 i wouldn't let that put you off this process by any stretch of the imagination um again it will depend on the size of your organization now i know in this yeah. meeting today we've got people like rnib and guide dogs who can probably go and speak to a couple of hundred people yeah. and then we've got smaller organizations that 10 might be might be a challenge so you know you've got a I think you've got to work with with what you've got. Um, so we've got membership, obviously. So what would would there be a minimum percentage of that membership that we should be speaking to to get a proper representative representation of what their needs and wants are? Uh, again, you know, I'd look at the I'd look at the makeup of your membership mm -hmm. um, and see, you know, see 
what percentage is, is made up of your over, over 60s maybe? What, what percentage is made up of, of parents or carers? And then, you know, what percentage is made up of working age people? Mm. And I try and get a broad, um, you know, I try and get a rep, a, at least one or two representatives from, from yeah. like key groups that you want to talk to. Um, and, you know, and then you'll be, you, you know, you can, it's a case of, you know, if you can get to the end of that research and say, we feel that this is representative of, of, our, of our membership, then, you know, you're golden really. So it doesn't have to be everybody, uh, but, you know, I'd try and get as, as, as great a representation as you can. So. Okay, thank you. Cool. Uh, I think, right, one more question. I think there was somebody that wanted to ask one more, so... No? Okay, perfect. We'll, we'll move on. Um, cool. So, um, so the next the next stage is the is the defining uh, defining stage. So this is this is essentially where you you look at your research um, and try to try to look at what what that research is telling you. You emphasize it all together. Um, you get all the answers together. You might use a big table to do this. Um, we we kind of yeah we used essentially um, a, a spreadsheet uh, which um, we we put all the answers to the questions in, read through it kind of multiple times, and then had a column where any any themes that we that we um, recognised were were coming out. So you know. It, this really lets you clearly define, you know, who, who your user is um, and what problems they're facing. Um, most products, services, will have multiple user types and have pro and have multiple problems. So it's it's really important at this stage to recognise that there's going to be a load of themes which are going to come out um, of your research, um, and you you might not be. The best organization to solve those problems or you might not have the resources to solve all of those problems um, I remember going back a few years when I first started working in this employment space and I'd kind of come up with quite a few different areas where I thought gaps gaps existed and I was speaking to speaking to a member of um, senior senior leadership who's, who's not there anymore um, and say, look, you know, there's there's this problem, this problem, this problem, this problem, this problem. I'm fairly new. What you know? How do you view kind of you know us working on this? And it's like, oh, well, I think we should be looking at it all. <laughs> and it's like we can't. You know, you just can't do it. We, we didn't have enough resources to do it. Um, so some of the questions that you might want to ask yourself is. Um, which problem, if solved, it will have the most impact? So, you know, what looking at the themes which have come out of the research, what do you feel is is going to make the biggest um, the biggest impact to your to your users? Um, um, which uh, problem is your organisation best place to solve as well? So, you know, one of the ones that come out of come out of the TPT research was people's anxiety around travelling to work um, and transport issues. Now, as an employment team, we just weren't best placed. We're never going to be best placed to to do work around that. We could, you know, we can pass that over to other teams and let them know that, that that's, you know, that's something which which is an issue. Um, but you know, we had to be really kind of realistic in, in what we were able to, you know, to um, design things which would be able to be solved. Uh, also, which problems do people care about most? Um, you know, you might have um, again like 10, 10 different problems which come out of your research, but you'll have. You, you know, the people carrying out the research will have, will have had a sense of, of which ones are most important to, to, your, to the users. Um, and, you know, it's, if, if there was one which was really strong, which was coming out, um, for example, one which, which come out of our research was that people wanted to hear more from other blind and partially sighted people in work of the jobs they do and how they do them. Now, this had been something which was on our agenda before, particularly. 
uh, but it come out of the research like, really strong. Um, so we couldn't ignore that. Um, and, and this is what I mean about, you know, not having the, the solution already in place, because it might be that something that you'd never even thought of is really important to 70, 80% of your users across the board. Um, and you have to change your thinking a little bit to, you know, to um, address that need. Um, and then, you know, this is always a tricky question, but which problems are the easier or quicker ones to solve? Um, you know, again, this will depend on what, what senior leadership management are hoping to achieve in a given year or, you know, under a given strategy for two or three years. But if you're looking for quick results, then maybe you're going to go, okay, well, we're going to concentrate on these ones because we've got the resource spare now and we can, you know, we can react to that. Um, you know, a real good example of that is, is what's happened recently with, with COVID-19. Um, you know, people were facing real problems. Are we, you know, all of our users will have been facing problems and it required, you know, some interventions will have been quicker than others, but could have made like a real life changing, uh, you know, it might have been a real real difference to somebody's life, life by, by putting that quick, quick uh, solution in place. Um, and then finally, which problems are the, are the right size to try and solve? Um, again, this is going to be very much dependent on the size of your, your organization, the resources that you've got to put into this. And you, you've got to be, you know, when you look through this data and you come together as a team, you might have, you, you know, I, I'd recommend having a member of senior leadership management involved in this to go, is this something that we can realistically do or is this just too big? Uh, you know, for, for the size of organization that we are. Because again, there's, there's no point by biting off more than, more than the, the you can chew. Um, you know, you've, you've, got a, you've got to make a service which, which works for users, um, but which you are able to, to deliver and isn't going to stretch you too much because then the, the quality is, is obviously going to be affected. Um, so, you know, after you've kind of done that, done that section and defined a problem, a couple of, couple of tools which you can use is um, a, a system called Mapping Unmet Needs, where you might look at a customer journey um, for, I don't know, accessing, um, it might be for something like accessing online banking. And you'd look at the whole journey, which, which you know, a blind or partially sighted person is going through and seeing where then touch points were and where unmet needs were. Now, was that is that training to use a an app? Is it training to use an iPhone and put the banking app on it? Is it actually the you know the, the user interface of an app? Um, you know, it, it, it's th this just clearly shows um, a journey which your customers going on. It maps out what's currently available to them. Um, and what isn't available to them and then you can go okay well we can do something in that space or we can do something in that space but we can't do something in, in that that in that space um hope that makes sense um i also sent through some of the the tpt um personas that we put together so after speaking to to our our individuals uh, we come up with a range of different personas um, that we felt we needed to design different, um, well, not different, but that we needed to take into account when we were designing our um, services and our comms and where we went to promote those services. Um, so I'd, I'd recommend taking a look through them to give you a bit of an idea. Um, we very much looked at social environment, how important employment was to them, how they felt about being employed. And then that really kind of guided us when we were, when it comes to the next stage, which I'll move on to in a second, which is around um, ideas and, and ideation. Um, I've actually got an, an example of unmet needs as well, which I forgot to send this morning. So I'll, I'll follow up with that after the seminar today. Um, so that's the that's the, the defining stage. Again, I'm going to open up for any questions. Um, we've got a little bit of time, so um, yeah. Any questions, please. Just Hi, Martin. Out. This is um, Emma Lucas from my site, Nottinghamshire. Go ahead. Uh, hi. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just wanted to know um, when you were sort of 
determining what you could and what you couldn't do did you think about partnership working for the things that you couldn't do on your own and if you did what, can you give us an example of that um i've got to be honest in, in this in this in in what what in what we've done currently um at this stage no um but one example which i can give you recently um around this was um we um so we we done all we done we you know we've done all this research, um, and we we didn't use partnership working at the at the initial stage. But what we've realised recently um, as a result of of uh, the, the COVID nineteen pandemic is that people are a lot more at risk of redundancy. Um, so I had a I had a look through the research of people that were in work. Um, and one of the themes that had come out at that point um, was around coaching and professional coaching. Um, and, um, you know, it, it just it hit me that in this current climate, that you're going to have people that are coming out of potentially coming out of work um, who've been in work a long time. Um, maybe don't want to engage primarily with a charity uh, for this sort of stuff. So we've partnered with um, the Centre for Resolution, um, who are a coaching and a mediation service, who were run by a, a guy who's um, got visual impairment himself. Um, now we knew that they could deliver coaching, uh, whereas we, you know, we couldn't. They could deliver the, the professional coaching, um, really guide somebody through that kind of, you know, their feelings around being made redundant. Um, and, you know, we, we actually launched that last week. It was it was meant to coincide with the end of furlough and then the government decided that they weren't going to, <laughs> they were going to extend furlough for another few months. Um, but, you know, the, all the research is telling us that um, disabled people are more likely to be facing redundancy and have been furloughed um, than um, non-disabled people. So... That was, you know, that's kind of how we used the research that we'd had previously to, to maybe redesign um, a service rather than designing one from the outset in partnership. Lovely, thank you. No worries. Um, have we got any more questions? No, okay, brilliant. Gotta be honest, guys, I was hoping for a few more questions. I'm gonna to have to do a bit of padding now. <laughs> Only joking. Um, so we've gone through, you know, we've done the research, uh, we've looked at the research, we've mapped out, um, we've mapped out our customer journeys, we've mapped out what our customers look like, their personas. Um, now we get to the really exciting part of, of using that data. And you know you've you've prioritised what you're going to work on. Um, it's now important to start thinking about some ideas. Um, and this this stage can be can be tricky, but I also love it, uh, particularly if you've got a lot of ideas people working working in your organisation. And again, at this at this point, you you maybe really do want to you know you you'll have shared this research hopefully with other people in in your organisation. I think it's really important that people are aware of, of what's going on and that you share bits as as you go, um, and that you start to get other people involved. Um, it, you know, you might want to get a member of your senior le senior leadership team in. You might want to get. Um, some beneficiaries involved in this. It might be a workshop where you, you know, you spend half a day, a full day going, right, these are these are some of the problems, these are some of the gaps. What can we do to fill it? And just have loads of ideas, you know, like and not have anything off the uh off the bat, you know, like nothing which is um you know, like no, no suggestion is silly and no suggestion is too big or too small. Like that, that isn't what this stage is about. It's, it's about just getting the ideas down. Um, and then, you know, because you, you're confident at that point that they're, they're grounded in real data as well. You know that these ideas are fit in something which is, you know, which our user group have told you is important to them. Um, So 
so yeah um you know so that that's that's that this is this is a great stage but again i'm going to come back to this it's amazing and i bet you, i bet some of you are sat there thinking oh well we do this already but you've done you you just go straight to this stage you you know without doing the research um you get people in the conference room to brainstorm ideas which are, which is essentially based on a you know, potentially made on a, 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 a made up problem, which, which hasn't been validated. Um, or it, it could be a real problem, but one, one that isn't high on your um, users, um, you know, it, it's not high on their um, agenda. You know, it, it's, you might be trying to solve a problem that, that they're not that, that bothered about. Um, so are they, are they then going to engage with it? you know maybe not and and this is you know this was one of the big questions that we had to ask our, ourselves as part of the employment team as well was well you know what um how how important is being employed to blind and partially sighted people of working age is it is it the big deal that that we think that it is that we think that it should be um you know uh, this all fed into to this part before the ideation stage and then you go okay it is but some of the some of the themes which we saw was um around confidence um again as i said in the in the last stage massive thing which come out was people going oh we want to know um we want to know about like the jobs that other blind and partially sighted people are doing but not just what they do how they do them um, so one of the ideas that we kind of come up with was, okay, can we start to, to make like a resource where we speak to blind and partially sighted people in work that are doing a range of jobs, um, not just the, the really inspiring person, um, you know, can we highlight the job that they're doing, how they got there, you know, how many jobs they applied to before they got there and, and you know, out the back of that, we, you know, that was, that was one of the ideas that we had. We also had an idea to do regular webinars, which were with, you know, blind and partially sighted people in work, uh, talking about their careers, um, you know, how the, the challenges which they faced, because we'd been told by people that this is what they wanted to hear, um, you know, much more than, much more than anything else. So one of the uh, one of the examples that I sent through today uh, was the Hadley Institute. I absolutely love these guys. Um, they um, fifteen minutes left, so I'm going to be quick. Um, they they uh, took a took a look at their distance learning um, and were uh, really. Um, you know, they, they've spoke to a massive group of their users. They've used surveys, they've used interviews, they've used focus groups, they've used everything really to redesign what their, what their offer looks like um, for, for people that want to learn things like Braille, um, how to use IT equipment, how to use software packages. I'd really recommend that you give that a read because this is a, you know, this is an organization in the US that's working with our client group, with blind and partially sighted people, that you can clearly see how they've used this design thinking approach to do it. And actually, when I've spoke to their CEO previously, and the first thing that she said to me was, oh, yeah, we use design thinking to, to do, that underpins everything that we do. And they're getting really, really great results. And, and that case study is just, I, I, I really love it. So, um, so I've got to quickly open up for any questions uh, before we move on to prototyping and testing. Any questions? Hello, it's Natalie yes. from R and I B. Hey, how are you doing? Um, hi. I just wanted to, perhaps it might be a bit too soon, but maybe ask a little bit. You talked at the end of the last section, actually, just very quickly about sharing the research and the learning that you've got with others. Yeah. Is it important to share that back with the users and the individuals that were involved yeah, in the initial 100%. interviews? Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, sorry, I didn't maybe didn't make that maybe, maybe didn't make that clear, but yeah, I think it's. Um, you know, you 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 essentially want you you're you're asking kind of quite a lot of these these guys. You know, you you know you are taking up probably a good hour of their time, 
and they want to see what's what's coming out of it you know they and you know it, you will get to this that you tell like particularly your prototyping and well my your testing stage but i would definitely recommend uh just an overview thanking them for for the time and go these are some of the key themes which which come out of the research which we've carried out um and these are the ones that we're going to be you know that we're going to be pushing forward for and let them know what the next what the next stage is and, and if you you know want them to be involved we also at the end of our interviews ask people if they were keen to to help us out when it comes to testing um testing these ideas as well so yeah we'll, we'll you know obviously i'll move on to that in the in the next bit but um, perfect thank you yeah cool um any more questions okay brill okay um so the next stage is um prototyping um so once you've settled on an idea or two um it's time to prototype now a prototype is just a a really basic um well it could be anything really it could be um you know you, you could just have a word document which which shows uh, some text which you're going to use on a website. It could be, uh, uh, you know, it could show a homepage. Um, it could be the outline of a, of a service which you're going to deliver. Um, the idea is, you know, to, to quickly build something which you can use to learn from and, and learn whether you're on the right track. Um, like I say, you know, it can be really simple. It can be, um, you know, some people will put together really rudimentary products made out of cardboard and paper, a bit Blue Peter-ish. Um, you know, one of the examples which I, I generally use for this is, um, you know, is access to work who were, who were massive during COVID-19. They were redesigning what their... Um, you know, the claims process, and this is still ongoing. Um, but the very first iteration that, that they had of this was um, was just a Word document that they got users to read and see how they felt about it. You know, it, it outlined what the, what the system was going to do, how it would work, um, you know, the, and they just asked people how they felt about the language, how, you know, the idea and got feedback on that. So it can be really, you know, really easy to, to prototype um, these ideas like really, really quickly. Um, so one of the things that, that we've done was um, in our prototype, it was, it just described what a, what a, what a video would look like. Um, and it was, you know, it outlined the type of people that we'd get to work, you know, to, um, to appear in the videos um how long the videos would be uh the kind of you know the themes which would be covered um just really built up a picture of what a good uh video highlighting somebody that was blind or partially sighted in work would look like um so yeah that that's the prototyping stage now again this can be really quick but it's quite daunting so it's always good to have you know a few people working on this it can't just be one person that's that's prototyping it it's really got to be a team effort so um yeah so i'm gonna again quickly open up for any questions i'll also take questions at the end so don't worry if, if something's come up uh you know i'll give five five or so minutes at the end to, to take questions too so uh, but if anybody's got questions on prototyping please just just ask now Any questions? Hi, it's Carol Fletcher from Blind Veterans. Hi. Just in terms of the, the prototyping and testing, um, is that something that you, you would do like maybe as focus groups? I, I'm just trying to think if you've got quite a complex service redesign or something along those lines, how, how would you go about testing that out? Is there, is there a different set of methods depending on, on what you're trying to test? Oh, you know, this, I guess this is where the, the difficulty comes with, with doing an introduction is that 
Um, you know, the, if you if you tested a massive a massive redesign, then um, you know what elements of that would you be wanting to test? I guess mm -hmm. is it the comms that you're using um, around it? Is it the you know if it's an online service, do you want to do you want to test the user interface? Do you want to test all of these things? So in that case, you're going to need different groups um, to do it. You, you know, you wouldn't expect one or two individuals to do all that. So, yeah. you know, if, if it's a big, if, you know, I, I know that you guys are, are a national um, national organization. So chances are is that your redesigns are going to be bigger than, than maybe, you know, um, a, a, a smaller local organization. Yeah. Um, so so you your, your yeah. testing is going to be really different. You might have a number of subgroups then doing different. Yeah, types yeah, of I, yeah. Again, I think at the fact you know you'd be whatever your prototype is. Uh, you know, if you want to move that forward, then I think I'd be looking at you know, well, what elements do we do we need to test? Um, and you know, what what it'll be it'll be very much defined on what you know what how how would how does success look like for that that project or that service. And, you know, what do you need to know from your users? So I guess it's, would you engage with this? So maybe you'd have a, a description of what the service is. Um, then you might want to know, oh, well, how easy would you find to navigate the referral process? So, you know, you'd, you'd test that with some people, you know, you'd walk them through it, get their feedback on, on every stage just to go, you know, because they might be like, uh, if it's, yeah. If it's an online form, that's really going to put me off. What I prefer is to is to be able to call. So you might go, okay, well, we'll keep the online form for those people who do want to do it, but there's a, a section which are gone that they'd still prefer to be able to refer themselves via the telephone, which you might not have considered before. So. Yeah, thank you. That's really no useful. Thanks. Yeah. Um, any more questions? Okay, perfect. We've got seven minutes left. So um, I've timed this pretty well, <laughs> I've got to say. Um, okay, so um, so finally, the, the testing stage. Um, so yeah, you test your idea, test your prototype with, um, with real users. Um, you'll find out whether people understand your idea um, and whether they like it. Um, and these these findings will keep on feeding into your into your process because for me this is a process which which continues. You should be evaluating the service which you're offering every really you know every year really I'd say um, as a minimum if you can um, you know and and testing is always in, involved in that. Um, so as I was just kind of saying to uh, Caroline from Blind Veterans there. Your testing stage very much depends on on you know what the what the product what the service is that you're testing. It could be really big. It might be really small. Um, again, you you want to involve your users in this um, because if they're telling you that it's rubbish and they don't like it, then they're not going to engage with it. Then you can pretty much assume that other people aren't going to do it. And if they say that you're referral process is really tricky um, or the you know the website that you're using um, looks really cluttered um, then again it you know that, that's just putting your users off and you're not taking their you know their thoughts into into consideration which you really need to because the success of everything that we deliver is based on you know it being good for blind and partially sighted people. Um, so if, if we don't ask them, then we don't know. And again, as I was kind of saying earlier, it's much better to, to realize this when you've got a rough prototype um, that people either don't understand the concept or don't like it. Um, and then you read this, you know, you go back and you read design um, and you've, you've maybe, you know, all you've, all you've spent on this is time. You haven't spent an awful lot of money. You haven't redesigned your website which has cost us as a pound, thousands and thousands of pounds. And then you, you know, users kind of go, this is really inaccessible. I can't use it. It doesn't work with a screen reader, you know, or that the service, they, they just don't think that it's, it, it's worthwhile. You know, they don't need it. They're not going to engage with it. The driver of, you know, the driver of X, Y, or Z instead. So, um, 
you know, all I can, I, I think, you know, it, again, it's it's difficult in an introduction to to go, um, oh, the, the, you know, this is this is what method you use, but essentially what what we done with the videos was. <clears throat> We went to our um, went to our site loss councils, um, which I think people people know about, um, and um, you know played them to played them to site loss council members um, and just got feedback. Showed them to members of staff who were blind and partially sighted. Sent them over to uh, to other people that were um, you know who worked on the who'd been our users that had been involved all the way through. And said, okay, this is this is what one of our videos looks like. We just shot it on an iPhone. We said, you know, this, this is essentially what it what it might look like. It's going to be better edited, but um, but yeah, you know, we and then the feedback that we got, we were able to to iterate. Fortunately, a lot of people liked it. So yeah, it was, it was good. Um, So I've got three minutes left. So any general questions before we wrap up? Hi, it's it's Gemma from my site and arts. Yeah. Hi. Um, just a question about the um, with the testing phase. Yeah. Um, once you've got all your feedback and things, if say you know nobody likes the idea. Do you have a phase that you go back to? Like, would you go back to the ideas or the prototyping? Or what, what's the process then? Again, it depends what what come out of the you know. It depends on what what come out of the you know the testing really. If if it was that they didn't like the idea, then you'd be hoping to get a little bit more information than oh, I just don't like it. You know what what don't they like about it? You know, so it, it might be that you go back to the prototype and change it. You change the wording. You know, you change the offer. Or it might be that you go, you go back and go, okay, that one's not a runner. So what, you know, is there another idea that come out of that idea ideation stage um, that we can, um, you know, that we can then use um, instead and prototype and test? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'd, I'd hope though, you know, if you've kind of gone through this process well, that you know, by the time you get the testing you know, it, it's not going to be a case of re really scrapping an idea. Um, you know, I, I've got to say that because, you know, everything that you've done has been based in research. So you can be confident that there'll only be minor tweaks that need need making it a testing rather than a, a massive overhaul. So Yeah, sure. I'd hope. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. Okay. Yeah. Thanks very much. Great. Uh, any more questions? H Hello. Yep. Um, I'm Jenny White. I'm from Galloway's Society for the Blind. Thank you very much for today. Um, my quick question is, all these stages, would they um, be impacted on your time scale and how you would look at where you would get your funding from maybe to implement some of these uh, larger changes that you were hoping to do yeah so obviously um that you know this is this is what i mean around the 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 part where you where you define the problem like um you know you've, you've got to be realistic about about the resources um and, and what you know what you've got available to you um a research stage can be you know it can be it, it can it can take time but you know you it also might only take you know a couple of hours out of a day out of a member of staff's staff's work so i'd be looking at you know what what teams you've got to be able to carry out this research in the in the first place um and you know it might take a few weeks and it might be 10 15 20 interviews um and then you decide on right we've got x amount of resource we can do you know we can solve this problem or we can solve that problem um I, you know i don't know how funding necessarily works works for you guys but I, I'd, I'd assume that there's you know there's there is funding available to where you've got evidence to then design projects um as well as deliver them um so i might be looking for funding around around that thank you um any more questions we're about to hit half past i think so we have it half past but i'm i'm happy to take any more questions if Anybody's got any? Okay, brilliant. Well, 
hopefully, um, just, just to wrap up, um, I'm hoping that after this, you will all have taken the red pill. Uh, you've got to go do some more reading around uh, design thinking. Um, and, you know, you're going to be really irritating like me. And whenever anybody comes to you with an idea about a service or something that they want to, want to do to people, you go, well, have you asked the people that you're doing it for? Have you got the research? Have you made sure that this is what they want? Have you gone through these stages? Have you tested it? Um, and, you know, and hopefully you've learned a bit. Um, I'll send out some more resources afterwards as well um, with more introductory stuff. Um, and also feel free to, to contact me directly if you have any questions. Um, I'm, you know, I love doing this sort of stuff. So really happy to, to help where I can. Um, you can, uh, my email address is martin.sixworth at pocklington-trust.org.uk. Um, I just ask one of the visionary team and they'll, they'll link us up. So, But thank you very much, guys. Really enjoyed it. And I hope you found it helpful and speak again soon. Bye-bye.